Rise of the Ronin, the upcoming combat-focused open-world action RPG from Team Ninja, is coming out soon in a jam-packed year of massive games. With so many games and barely enough time to play them all, you'll no doubt be wondering if this is one you should pick up. Well, thanks to Sony, we managed to get hold of an early copy of Rise of the Ronin, and in this early impressions video, we can talk about our experience from an early section of the game. We've also been provided with B-roll that we must include in this video because we can't use our own capture as per the game's embargo, so do forgive us if we can't show you the exact things we experienced as we go through. We would have preferred to have showed you guys our actual captured gameplay, but unfortunately we can't. Let's go over what Rise of the Ronin is, and then we'll jump into specifics about the world, combat, and performance. The game promises to have us embark on an epic journey across a war-torn 19th century Japan. After three centuries of the Tokugawa shogunate's oppressive rule, the black ships of the west have arrived upon the nation's borders, and so, the country has fallen into a state of turmoil. Amidst the chaos of war, a nameless warrior who is our player character will forge a path holding the very fate of Japan in our hands. You start the game off by making two characters, a male and female, who are twins. And from the brief intro of the game, it appears that you are both trained by a mysterious force of assassins known as the Veiled Edge to become Blade Twins. This leads you into a training section of the game where you learn the basics and get to grips with things, and not long after that you go out on a story mission where you actually experience these mechanics firsthand in action, and eventually a major story choice happens which I won't spoil, but it was an interesting way to give you as the player a choice on how you want to play the rest of the game. Then your journey begins in the open world of the game. To be honest with you, from my playtime, it was very reminiscent of other similar open world games, with a large map, a multitude of markers to explore, areas to liberate by defeating enemies, and various side quests to go and do to defeat various enemies or gather certain items. I wouldn't say I experienced anything in the world that was particularly unique or special, and in my honest opinion, the various areas I explored didn't look particularly great from a visual perspective either. It felt a bit generic like a mix of other games trying to achieve a similar atmosphere. But let's talk about the combat and gameplay, with it being developed by Team Ninja, the studio behind Neo and Ninja Gaiden, you would expect some pretty visceral and satisfying combat. In practice, you will need to master executing timed parries called counter sparks, as well as dodges, guards, various abilities, different stances with strengths and weaknesses, weapon powers, and more. There's a wide array of weapons from sabers to katanas, pole arms and spears, and even ranged weapons including bows, rifles, pistols, and more. Each of these weapons has a different feeling moveset and timings, making it fairly fun to learn the differences as you switch between them mid-fight, because you can actually carry two melee weapons and two ranged weapons at any given time. Pulling off back-to-back -back counter spark parries is reminiscent of the satisfaction of Neo's parrying, and you do feel like quite a badass when doing this against a group of enemies and you're just slaughtering them in style. The combat is definitely the strong suit of this game and it's where I found myself having the most fun. That being said, we didn't get to actually experience any additional stances, powers or moves in our playtime of this preview, so it didn't take too long until it actually got a bit repetitive. But let's talk about the enemies and their AI because overall it felt quite inconsistent, where some enemies were pretty brutal and would almost one-shot you when you messed up, while others would just kind of stand around and watch as you killed their friends, making the AI seem a little lackluster compared to other games where it's more responsive. And on this point of AI, let's talk about stealth, because the game does have an interesting stealth experience, where you can sneak around, distract enemies with throwable bells, and do stealth takedowns. To me, as someone who is pretty bad at stealth games, this did honestly feel like a bit of an easy mode, as much of the AI was kind of unresponsive to the various stealth mechanics, with many of them not reacting to my shenanigans, even if I was nearby, or they should be able to see me. But there was a mechanic that I really liked. Early on in the game, and in some missions, you get to to do a very cool mechanic of switching characters mid-battle, allowing you to take control of friendly NPCs who you build bonds with. This actually made the combat quite engaging, and it was very fun to switch between different characters and playstyles on the fly, letting you mix up combat and bully an enemy with a barrage of strikes from multiple angles. However, from my time playing, this mechanic was implemented sporadically, so it wasn't always a viable thing you could do. So overall, to me, the combat felt 
mostly good and it does look like it will be a lot more fleshed out as you progress and gain various stances, make your way down the skill tree, unlock abilities and more. But I do hope the AI improves and becomes a bit more reactive as you get into the rest of the game. And now let's talk about the performance and graphics. This was a preview and there will be an upcoming day one patch so my experience might be different to the released version of the game. But with a lot of massive games releasing this year and other titles in this setting having some really great visuals and overall decent performance, I was really expecting to fall in love with Rise of the Ronin and its feudal Japanese setting which is one I love in video games. For these visuals, my excitement dimmed fairly early on with a good looking world but with nothing really special making it stand out. My breath wasn't taken away by any impressive vistas or environmental scenes and overall it felt a bit generic for this setting. This coupled with the many visual bugs and issues that I experienced, like textures not loading, areas looking blurry and so on, definitely didn't leave me impressed. I played the game in its graphical mode to try and experience it in its full visual glory, but sadly I was left Left unimpressed and the performance of the game definitely left a lot to be desired. I didn't have an FPS counter on but it definitely felt like I wasn't consistently hitting 30 FPS and this is where you definitely want to be or higher in a game with such importance on timing in combat. I did test the performance mode a little bit and honestly it didn't feel much better either. Overall the world, performance and graphics left a lot to be desired in my opinion but it does have things going for it like its combat and actual gameplay. Of course you would expect this from a Team Ninja game, but unfortunately everything else felt a bit lackluster and generic, which distracts from the overall experience. I think there could be a lot of fun to be had with the game's various mechanics and systems that seem to go pretty deep, with a range of weapons, armors, stats, skill trees, stances and more, although I didn't get to experience this from my preview. I believe if you really liked the Neo games and other games with a big focus on mastering timing in combat, it might be worth trying. But if you're looking for a more open world RPG experience to explore, get immersed and enjoy the story, this probably wouldn't be a game I would recommend, especially with other games that do this format in a similar way like Ghost of Tsushima, which is also an open world action RPG, but seems to execute on a lot of these ideas in a better way, and even has a PC release coming this year. Among a pretty crazy year for action games in general, I feel like this is a highly competitive genre that requires a game to really stand out in order to succeed. Rise of the Ronin has all of this on paper to achieve it, but from my time playing I wasn't especially impressed. This is of course an early preview and a lot of what I've gone over here could change once you get deeper into the game, but I can only talk about my experience from the beginning of the game and this is honestly how it was for me.